Aspiring writers and publishers, today is your day. Now, our mailbox has been inundated with people asking us how they break into this industry. So, you know, we saw it fit to host this informative discussion ahead of World Book Celebration set to take place later on in the week. Today, we're dissecting the current state of South African literature and publishing industry by putting particular focus on just how favorable the industry is for black writers. And to help us take this conversation further, I'm joined in studio by Spongi Lamachika from Jakarta Media. That's an, an African publishing company. And from a Durban studio, we joined by writing special from Dancing Pencils, Felicity uh, Kears. We're also joined by quite a number of aspir aspiring publishers and authors in the audience. A very good morning to you, Spongil. I'm going to start with you. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome. Good morning. Okay, now, m many people have been asking us uh, how to break into this, in, into this industry. Break down the processes for us, if you can, uh, how to write a book and how to publish it. I think when it comes to the writing, it's just putting time to it, right? And you just put time to it and keep writing. Um, and put research to what you're writing, right? Um, and then in terms of the publishing, most publishing houses will have a submission period or a submission process, which essentially means you need to send through probably a minimum of three chapters or so, tell them a bit about yourself, a synopsis of what you're trying to write. And then it's important to be very clear as to what genre you're writing in. So if you imagine, like, if you walk into a bookstore, where would your book sit? Mm -hmm. You know, and if you have a clear understanding of that, there's a better chance of us knowing what to do with your script and where to place it. Because often people mismatch that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to raise that point, actually, that uh, you've just raised. Why is it important uh, where a particular book is placed in a bookshop? Because at the end of the day, as publishers and as authors, we're trying to sell the book, right? And it's important for you to know, as a consumer, where to find what you're looking for. Um, and therefore, that's why it's important for us to know would see what you're trying to get at with your content. Okay. And uh, we say a very good morning to uh, Felicity, who's in our Durban studio. A very good morning to you again, Felicity. Now, on writing, you, your book titled On Writing, Write Brain and Dancing Pencils, this is truly a Bible on writing. Uh, talk us about uh, why you decided to write this book. What inspired you? I've been writing for about 55 years. I love it. I fell in love with it. Studied all the different genres, did courses, and then I discovered the, the secret of accessing the right brain by boring the left brain. And that's the magic of writing. And that's what makes writing very easy for, for young and old. And that is my speciality, and particularly in the rural areas where I feel that there's the greatest need. So that is really where uh, I spend my concentrating, uh, I concentrate. Now, Felicity, as someone with uh, uh, about week, six decades worth of writing experience and, uh, and have seen many writers come and go, what's the secret that makes one a great writer? I, I think you have to know your subject. You have to be passionate about it. And you have to believe in yourself and you have to commit yourself to writing and all the hurdles that come with it. Because there are a great many obstacles, stumbling blocks, things that are going to stop you. So you have to not listen to any neg negative people. You have to just keep keep going. Do, do, do your own thing as well as you can. Believe in yourself. And you probably find a publisher. I am a niche publisher and I only take right brain trained material. I've had 2,000 books published in the last 20 years, so I'm very happy that we're a thriving, <laughs> thriving um, little institution. But we're specialists. We, we um, only work with our right brain trained people, and we train them through mentors. We train them in, in the rural areas. This, this, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a pile of writing here written in one morning because the right brain is very quick and uh, it knows exactly what you want to do and the right, left brain gets in the way because it thinks too much so by boring the left brain we access the right brain and in no time at all young people write publishable work and then I bring out an anthology of stories so that raises their self-esteem it gives them a, a life skill because they're learning to use a whole brain not half a brain and uh, and I, I love what I do. We have novels c created and people's lives have changed. They've become journalists and radio producers and all sorts from having discovered their talent in writing. But I, am, I do it differently. Thank you.
All right, Felicity, please stay on the line. We'll certainly continue the discussion in just a moment. Now, you've heard Felicity saying that the publishing industry is actually striving. Do you think that's the case? How well is the industry doing at the moment? I think we're doing pretty well. I think any time when you're expanding is a good, uh, is a good time. And I think for the first time in a long time, literally anyone can get published, whether it's through traditional publishing or self-publishing. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah, but uh, we're not selling as many books as in the international market. Why is this so? <sighs> okay, so international market, obviously, I think they, I mean, it's just most people are better positioned to buy books or whatever the case is. Okay. But also, I think when we say we're not selling as much as the international market, yes, that's true, but it's also who you ask, right? So often our stats in terms of what books we sell are the people that go into a mall or whatever it is and into a bookstore and buy a book. Um, but I think that South Africa has a very interesting informal sector as well, and nobody has a handle on that exactly yet. So we're not getting those stats. Okay. So I think even Messiti, we're not selling as much with a pinch of salt, you know? So mm. with the international market, yes, but are we, we are selling pretty well. Okay. Now, Felicity, Felicity, back to you now in Durban. Uh, what are some of the common mistakes that writers and aspiring writers make, uh, which may lead to readers uh, considering a piece of work as literary uh, brilliance or a just br a terrible piece of work? Uh, that's difficult. I think you have to have voice, and you have to have you have to have passion. You have to have power, you have to have voice. Some very carefully written works uh, are over overlooked and not looked at, even though they may be grammatically correct, because they're using um, too much editing, too much uh, changing of words. Uh, um, the, the, the great writers say, use the first word that comes into your mind. Don't hover, don't, don't try change it, just write. Uh, that art, the problem is, thinking too much, changing your work, feeding it, it's rubbish, throwing it away, it's what you call nausea. You have to mm. just write until you get to the end, and that's what you call write with the door shut, just write anything, anything that comes into your head, and then you write with the door open. In other words, you then look at what you've written, and you, you decide what is uh, what you want to say, and you remove what you don't want to say, and then I would say then you can possibly look for a publisher. And we see more and more books being published locally, but then the rate of readers remains significantly low. What's the problem? This country uh, uh, hasn't really got a background culture of reading, where there are lots of books lying, lying around the homes, where the priority is to go and spend money on a book rather than um, a hairdo or earrings or a new dress. So it depends on your priorities, and I think the priorities in this country are not really on, on reading and books. It's on other, other things, cell phones and different things like that. So I think until we change our slot, and it's very good that the primary schools and the rural areas are getting children to read at a young age. And what I'm really pleased about is that we, we, we um, bring out work written by children, Children will read other people, other children's work, and then what that will do is encourage the, the schools can then get them to read what they want them to read. So, though it is not great literature that they are writing to begin with, it's beautiful work because it comes from the heart, it's real, it's true. Other children will read it, you'll get them reading. Once you get them reading, you'll get them, you'll get them writing, and things will change. So, it, it depends on. I would say a change of attitude in the schools and homes. It's a big job, but it can be done because our literacy levels are very low. All right, Felicity, please hold your thought. I will certainly uh, continue the conversation after the break. Uh, we joined in studio by Felicity Kitts and Esbongi Lamachiga, uh, publishers and writers. They're helping us dissect the state of literature in South Africa. And we have in our studio uh, some uh, panel members and as well as the, the studio audience that will be posing questions to the authors. Let's take a short break now. We'll continue after the break.